Welcome to some more fun with Fitzy. Today we're going to be talking about the balance sheet and its features. Here is a simple balance sheet that we're going to be walking through today. We're going to walk through all of the features on it so that you will be able to prepare one for yourself. First of all, I'd like to point out that the fundamental accounting equation uh, that we've been learning, assets minus liabilities equal owner's equity, can be found on the balance sheet. If you move the liabilities to the other side of the equal sign, you will have assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. The exact same equation. You'll notice this minus sign changes to a positive. Okay, here it is. So assets plus liabilities equals owner's equity. Assets are always on the left-hand side of the balance sheet, and liabilities and owner's equity are on the right-hand side. So the equal sign is sort of there. Let's talk about the assets first. Assets are listed in order of liquidity, and we talked about liquidity already. Liquidity is the order in which the assets are converted into cash. Okay. Accounts receivable. We have a list here of customers who purchase goods or services but are going to pay at a later date. They are in debt to the business. They owe us money. Okay, anyone who owes money to the business is called a debtor. Now's a good time to remember this term. A debtor is another word for accounts receivable. I'm going to call it AR accounts receivable. And I just said AR it could be a short form for accounts receivable, but never abbreviate on a financial statement. So the names of the customers are listed in alphabetical order by the last name. Listed after cash, as accounts receivables are usually collected within 30 days, and because assets are listed in order of liquidity, cash comes first, which we have here, and then accounts receivable because that is our next most liquid asset. Supplies and long-term assets are listed last as they are not typically converted to cash but are used up in the operation of the business or used to generate um, cash. Okay, let's talk about liabilities now on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. Liabilities are listed in order of when they are normally paid. Okay, so we're going to put accounts payable first. Accounts payable is a list of suppliers who the company purchased goods or services from, but now we're going to pay at a later date. Okay, we owe them money. They are amounts owed to creditors. So accounts payable, another word for accounts payable is creditor. Remember we just said accounts receivable is debtor. Well, accounts payable is a creditor. Okay, a creditor is anyone to whom the business owes money to. Accounts payable can be abbreviated as AP, but we're not going to do that on the balance sheet. And you notice here on the balance sheet, accounts payable serves as a heading, and there's nothing in the column beside it. Okay? We just put the amount. So in this case, 1950 is owed to Arrow Supply, and 250 is owed to Best Repair. So we just list the amounts we owe to them beside their names. And again, we list them alphabetically. They are listed first under the liability heading before bank loan and mortgage payable because they typically are paid within 30 days. So we're going to pay them first. You'll notice in the textbook it says bank loan is first. Uh, either way, I'm, I'm okay with. Now, owner's equity is listed separately from liabilities, but it's still on the right-hand side. You always show the owner's name, always, always, always. The owner's name plus the word capital, and there's a comma between, okay? J. Salas, comma, capital. This figure, as you know, is the difference between total assets and liabilities. So if we take our total assets, which is here, and subtract our total liabilities, which is here, it should equal this. So this assets minus liabilities equals, I'm sorry, equals our capital, which is right there. Oops. Okay. So here's how we actually format our balance sheet. 
Okay, title is always going to be who, what, when. Who is the name of the company, what is the name of the financial statement, and when is the date you're making the financial statement. On a balance sheet, it's a snapshot in time. So on September 30th, this was the balance sheet for Easy Rentals. What is the financial statement, when, date of the financial statement. Subheadings. We're going to write as we're going to write an underline underneath our subheadings. As you can see here, assets has an underline, liabilities, and owner's equity. You could center this, but if you center one, make sure you center all of them. You'll notice there's a single ruled line before all subtotals and totals. Okay, so here we're going to add up all of our assets and draw a single ruled line, just like in math, and then the total goes underneath. Here, we add up all our liabilities, draw a single rule line, and the total goes underneath. And this one is our total liabilities plus the owner's capital equals this number. And you'll notice both of these numbers in this row equal each other. This is why we call it a balance sheet. By both of those totals, we put a double ruled line. A double ruled line indicates a final total. Okay, always use a double ruled line in accounting to indicate final totals. And I mentioned this, these totals go on the exact same line. Always, always, always. Dollar signs are placed at the top of each column. <clears throat> So at the top of our asset column, we have a dollar sign. Top of our liabilities column, we have a dollar sign. And they go at each total. So we have total assets, total liabilities, and total liabilities plus owner's equity. The use of this columnar paper keeps our numbers lined up for us, makes it easier for us to add. Even dollar amounts, so that means no cents, can be shown as zero, zero, or a single line through it. It would look like this. Okay. Decimals and commas are not used on this paper. We just put them in the particular columns. So notice the columns. We'll start on the, on the far right. Cents goes here. Single dollars there. Tens and so on, hundreds, and then anything bigger than hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, all go in here. So here we go. We have 65,000 all in the same column. And here, 114,000. You notice how they all go in the columns here, okay? Always, always, always. And she's going to show you each of these columns again.